Hey everyone, this lesson is on the RAS, RAF, MEK, ERK pathway and its involvement in cancer and we're going to talk about what mutations in particular proteins in this pathway can lead to cancer. We're also going to talk about the types of cancer that are caused by dysregulation in this pathway and then we're also going to talk about chemotherapy drugs that we can use to help treat these types of cancers. So this is a continuation of my RAS, RAF, MEK, ERK pathway video. So if you haven't watched that, I'd suggest you watch that before watching this as it'll give you a better background. So to quickly review the RAS, RAF, MEK, ERK pathway, it all begins with the activation of EGFR or the epidermal growth factor receptor, which can be activated by ligands such as TGF-alpha, EGF, beta cellulin, or epiregulin. So when the EGFR receptor is activated, it leads to RAS being loaded with GTP. Now, in an off state or in an inactive state, RAS is actually GDP loaded. But when the EGFR is activated, it leads to GTP loading of RAS, which is the on signal or the activating signal of RAS. Now, when RAS is activated, it leads to RAF and MEK activation, which then leads to ERK activation, which then leads to a lot of these proteins such as C-MYC, c, c -June, and c -FOS, which all have roles in cell proliferation, survival, and metastasis. So if this pathway is hyperactivated, we can see why this pathway can lead to cancer pathogenesis because of the increases in cell proliferation, survival, and metastasis. So we're going to focus on a few proteins in this pathway that if mutated can actually lead to increased activation or hyperactivation of this pathway. And we're going to focus on EGFR, RAS, and RAF. So there are many protein mutations in the RAS-RAF pathway that can lead to its hyperactivation. With the EGFR gene, mutations that cause overexpression of the receptor can lead to an increased activation of the RAS-RAF pathway because if we have more receptor, it can bind to more ligand and cause the pathway to become more activated. Now with the RAS protein, as we've mentioned before, the RAS protein is inactivated or turned off when it's GDP loaded, but it is actually activated or turned on when the RAS protein is actually loaded with GTP. So when RAS has been mutated so that it is unable to actually hydrolyze the GTP back to GDP, this leads to a permanent activation of the RAS protein. Now, We've learned before in the previous lesson that there are three RAS proteins, HRAS, KRAS, and NRAS. Now, when there are mutations in codons 12, 13, 59, or 61 in either of these three RAS proteins, it can lead to cancer. Now, the three RAS proteins are involved in different types of cancer. So when the HRAS protein is mutated, we're more likely to get bladder tumors. So when there are bladder tumors, out of the three RAS proteins, it is HRAS that is more likely to be mutated. With colon and pancreas tumors, it is KRAS that is more likely to be mutated. And for hematopoietic tumors, it is more likely that NRAS is mutated. Now for the RAF proteins, again there are actually three RAF proteins, A, B, and C. But probably the most important one to know about is the mutation in BRAF, which is a point mutation with a V600E, which is a valine change to a glutamate. And this leads to a constitutively active form of BRAF when this point mutation occurs. Now, as we mentioned before, an overexpression of EGFR can lead to an overactivation of the RAS-RAF pathway. So what types of cancers are associated with an increase in EGFR? Well, some of the cancers that are associated with an overexpression of EGFR receptor are lung cancer. So in lung cancers, about 40 to 80% of lung cancers have an overexpressed EGFR. About 14 to 91% of non-small cell lung ca cancers actually have an overexpression of EGFR receptor. 27 to 77% of colorectal cancers are associated with an overexpression of EGFR. And 30 to 50% of pancreatic cancers are associated with an overexpression of this receptor as well. So as we mentioned before, RAS can come in a few different forms, HRAS, KRAS, and NRAS. And we've talked about cancers that are associated with mutations in each of these uh, 
proteins. So out of all the mutations in the RAS proteins, pancreatic cancer is probably the most important to remember. So 90% of pancreatic cancers are estimated to be caused by a mutation in the RAS protein. And as I remember before, it is typically KRAS. Now, other cancers that are associated with RAS mutations include thyroid cancer, which about 60% of thyroid cancers have a RAS mutation. 50% of colon cancers and 50% of endometrial cancers also have mutations in the RAS protein. And with colon cancer, it's most likely, again, to be due to a mutation in KRAS. With the lung adenocarcinomas, about 30% of those have a mutation in, in the RAS protein. And with myeloid leukemias, about 30% of myeloid leukemias have a mutation in RAS. And again, that is usually due to a mutation in NRAS. Now moving on to RAF, we learn about the point mutation in BRAF, which can lead to a constitutively active form of BRAF. Now the most important cancer to remember that is associated with this type of mutation is melanoma. And about 70% of melanomas have a BRAF V600E mutation. Again, about 50% of papillary thyroid cancers also have a mutation in RAF proteins, and about 10% of colon cancers have a mutation in the RAF protein as well. So now that we know some of the cancers that are caused by protein mutations in this pathway, what are some of the chemotherapy drugs that can target these particular proteins? Well, with the EGFR receptor, we can use some of the proteins known as the MABs with M-A-B-S at the end of their name. So one of the drugs that can be used is cetuximab or Herbitux, which actually uh, inhibits the binding of ligands to this receptor. And some of the other chemotherapy drugs that can be used to target this receptor are the TINIBs or the drugs with T-I-N-I-B-S at the end of their name. And an example of one that targets EGFR is Erlotinib. So these drugs can actually be used to effectively inhibit this receptor. Now the V600E mutated BRAF can actually be inhibited with the drug venurafenib or Zelraf and other venibs or drugs with FENIB at the end can actually be used to target RAF proteins as well. So even though we have these drugs to target the ras rat pathway, if there is an activating mutation in HRAS, KRAS, or NRAS, we cannot use these uh, medications because the activating RAS can just overcome them. So that's one of the exclusionary criteria for using these drugs. So typically, a patient has to get their um, RAS proteins actually assessed to see if there's any mutations in these RAS proteins. But in patients with RAS mutations, we could give them binimetinib to inhibit MEK. And there has been some data showing that binimetinib can actually be beneficial for these patients. Anyways, guys, that was a lesson on the ras raf mech erc pathway and its involvement in cancer. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe for more videos like this one. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.